Playhouse presents Charles Boyer, Dick Powell, David Niven, Ida Lupino. Brought to you by your neighborhood Singer Sewing Centers from coast to coast and the more than 32,000 members of the Singer Organization who make, sell, and service Singer sewing machines for both industry and the home. Remember, Singer sells its products and services only through its company-owned Singer Sewing Centers, identified by the Singer and Red S trademarks on the storefront. And um, some ketchup. Ugh. What time is it? Quarter six. Oh, don't blame me. What if I did bring up the subject? We should have laid over the night down there. So who was to decide whether we did or we didn't? Not me. All I did was suggest it was a better idea to keep going during the night time, instead of laying over. I didn't decide. If we don't stop to feed his face anymore, maybe we can make it to the big town by 10, 11 o'clock. Well, if I live that long. If you're feeling sleepy, I'd be only too happy to take a spell at the wheel. Is that a fair proposition? Tell me something, my dear. Yeah? Do you ever get up to the city? Oh, once in a while. I've got a sister in Granite Heights. Hey, that's quite a coincidence. I have a sister there myself. That makes us perfect for each other. Come on, finish up, Cookie. Hey, we could bat around together. I can show you some of the spots. I'll bet you say that to all the girls. Not bad. Not bad at all, considering the time and the place. What are you knocking yourself out for, Cookie? I can dream, can't I? Dream on your own time, will you? <laughs> you know something? You fellas are OK. Anybody told me that, I wouldn't have believed it. Let's get out of here. Say, hi, how far is it to Westover? What's in Westover? I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes. Why? I've got a friend there. Helped him out last year. He said, any time I'm in Westover, the town's mine. We could stop and freshen up. Well, what do you want to freshen up for? The only reason we started driving at 11 o'clock at night was because you all wanted to get back. Right or wrong? He has a point there. I'll have to admit that. Sure, you'll have to admit that. Well, what's he carry? He slept in the back of the car all the way. And he'll sleep all the way into town. I didn't notice that you were exactly riddled with insomnia. We could stop, have a nice, leisurely breakfast. And maybe I'd catch an hour or two on my back. Yeah. I could use a shave, too. Is it a deal? No, oh, let's keep going. Yeah, it's a deal. Hey, have a little consideration, can't you? There's a lady's present. Look, as a favor, I'm trying to make a little time with this girl. What's the rush? I told you, I want to see this friend of mine in Westover. He's a lieutenant in charge of burglary. I think he said he gets to the office early. Well, it's unusual, but hardly worth a special trip. I mean, to see a lieutenant get to his office early. Oh. The most spectacular pinch I ever made. Cut his mother-in-law to ribbons. To ribbons. you think it was a cat burglar? Oh, 
Oh, I see. Well, the officers will be out there in a minute. You stay there and wait for them. All right, ma'am. Goodbye. Yeah? Lieutenant Keogh around? Who wants him? Detective Francis Thompson, safe and loft squad, Metropolitan Police Department. Nice meeting you. My partner, hi, Silverman. Uh, how you doing? At the moment, I could be better. What have you got there? We picked him up down south. We're on our way back with him. Lieutenant Sam, go ahead. Thanks. Frank, for crying out loud, what are you doing in Westover? We're just passing through. I didn't know if you'd be in your office at 6.30 in the morning. 6.30? I'm here at 6. You know how burglary squawks are. If there wasn't somebody down here to handle all the overnight, when would we get our head out of water? Yeah, I should have remembered how you got me up at the crack of dawn every morning for a week when we were working on that last deal. <laughs> this is my partner, High Silverman, Lieutenant Keogh. How are you? Well, what's this you're on? This guy? Oh, this is Cookie Cookson. We picked him up last night. They had him in jail on investigation. Made him from Prince that we wanted him in the big town for 11 safe jobs. 11, huh? Yeah. You wouldn't think much of this boy to look at him. I've been on the safe and loft squad for 12 years. This is the best safe ripper in the East. You take a certified 350, peel the face off, knock out the combination, be inside in 20 minutes. Well, 18 and a half on a good day. Yeah, but the only thing is he don't know when enough is enough. Did you ever see one that did? Last night we figured it'd be a good idea to drive on back, but Frank and me could hold our heads up. He's the only one that got any sleep. <laughs> well, I'm glad you stopped. There's a nice cafe across the street. We go have some ham and eggs. Yeah, and I can get some of this beard chopped off. Barber's right next door. What do you say? It's okay with me, but what about him? Oh, please, don't concern yourself about me. Ham and eggs, shaves, anything. <laughs> don't worry about this guy. Lieutenant. Yeah, Lieutenant. Put this guy on ice a couple of hours. Okay. <clears throat> Come on. Hey, now, wait a minute. Let's stop all this wasting of time. Let's get back to the... Oh! out your pockets and give me your tie and belt. What's your name? Cookie Cookson. Oh, your actual first name. Are you going to put it down there? Yeah. Cecil. But don't hold it against me. I was in no position to argue when they hung it on me. Your last name, C-O-O-K-S-O-N? That's right, yes. Age? 37. What's the beef, Lucien? No local beef, Sergeant. He's en route north with two officers who got business with Lieutenant Keogh. Business? Some business. The tie and the belt. But can I keep the belt? Things have been a bit rough lately, and I've lost a few pounds. You get it back. What's the matter? You're frightened I'm going to hang myself up with a necktie or dig my way out with a comb? Here's a receipt for your property. Uh, how long is he going to be with us? I don't know. Maybe a couple of hours. Is it all right if I throw him in the tank? In the tank? Like every place else, we have a housing situation. We had a big night last night. There's no private accommodations. Look, if there's one thing I cannot abide, is people who drink too much. Oh, don't throw me in there with the alcoholics. That's yeah, the best I can do. We didn't have any reservation. Another customer for the tank. Yes, sir. throw me in here with all these rummies. I'm a respectable safe man. You can't do this to me. Maybe you can. I'm doing fine, thank you. I'm in no mood for idle chit-chat. How about a smoke? Can you spare a smoke? Thanks, friend. 
Say, friend. Oh, do you mind? I, I want to catch a little kip. I, I had a rough night last night. Well, I want to get out of here. I want to go home. You ain't the only one, McGee. No, not McGee. Johnson. Johnson, Center City. You let it know you, Johnson. I want to go home. Look, tell it to the keeper, will you? Don't bother me with it. I did tell it to the keeper. He said I had to tell it to the judge. Well, why didn't you tell it to the judge? Look, I've got problems of my own. Do you mind? I want to go home. Oh, look. Look, the sleepy dog, will you pal lie down, please? What time is it, anyway? Court don't open until 9 o'clock. You don't have to worry about the time until then. It won't kill you to tell me the time, will it? 7. Little after. You fellas have to get up early to get to work. That's a job. The whole crew have to be in at 7, or some of you privileged? The whole crew gets in. Look, don't talk to me. Talk to the judge. He'll give you all the conversation you want. Fine, I'll do that. Thank you. this resort pretty well. You been in and out of here a few times? Oh, a few times. Many, many, many times. Many times. Many times. Tell me, um, what kind of a judge do they have here? Oh, he's tough. Real tough. 30 days, that's all he knows. 30 days. That's probably our I'll get. I only got out a week ago. All I had was two beers. Well, he doesn't, doesn't always throw the book at you, does he? Oh, no. Some mornings he's feeling pretty good, then he's soft. Uh -huh. where's, the, where's the courtroom? Upstairs. Up two flights upstairs. Hey, who, um, who takes us, uh, us drunks over there? Drunks? Well, uh, us. Who takes us up there, anyway? A cop and another cop. Five at a time we go. Five at a time, up you go. Woo! That's it. Do they um, watch us very carefully? I mean, the whole thing seems a trifle lax. Who's going to run away? Not me. Oh, three square meals a day, and the price is right. <laughs> oh, yeah, thank me. you very much. Hi, friend. I can't sleep. I want to go home. Hey, didn't you tell me your name was Johnson? You got a cigarette. Sure. You're from Center City, huh? That's right, Johnson, Center City. What are you doing here? Just uh, visiting in Westover? Hardware convention. I'm in the hardware business. You know, it's a small world. It's a strange coincidence, but um, my name also happens to be Johnson. My name is Johnson, too. Yeah, you told me. What's your first name? Fred. Fred Johnson, Center City. Mine's William. William? Yeah, I don't suppose we're related in any way, but it's, it's just great to meet another Johnson. Very heartwarming. I want to go home. I ain't never been in jail before in my life. Well, confidentially, is not the sort of thing one ever gets really used to. It isn't? Well, so they tell me, the men in the know. I just pass it along for what it's worth, from one innocent Johnson to another. Five minutes. 
Get up on your feet. Come on, Judge Fred. wants to see you. Rise and shine. Up. Up. <clears throat> Have you got another cigarette? Yeah, listen, here's the thing. I'm an old customer around here, see? Now, they may want to take me up there in a different batch from you because you're a beginner. They only take up five at a time. I want to go home. Yeah, we all want to go home. We will, too, I hope. All right, we'll go to the courtroom five at a time. When I call a name, step up here and fall in line. Parsons! Miller! Miller! Wysensky! McSally! Sam Johnson. Yeah, that's me, pal. You'll be up later. All right, we'll go up to court in an orderly fashion. I don't want no disturbance or talk from any of you. Understand? Hey, friend, wait a minute. I gotta ask you something. You wouldn't leave me without another cigarette, would you? Oh, look, I, I smoke too much. You take the whole pack, huh? Thanks. Don't be... You're a real friend, friend. Good luck with the judge. Well, thank you. All right, let's go. Straight into the elevator. Stop. The rest of you fall in line behind him. Parsons, Miller, Wysensky, McSally, and Johnson. Not yet. I'll tell you when to go out. Did they pick you up again? I only had two beers, Sergeant. I hope that judge slaps you in the workhouse for 90 days. That'll boil you out if nothing else will. I didn't hurt nobody, Sergeant. OK. something like that a while back. Remember it, Hart? Yeah. This informant comes in to me and he tells me about this bird that's supposed to be knocking the knobs off. Hey, listen, Frank, over. it's after 9 o'clock. We better be collecting cookie and starting out. Yeah, I guess maybe you're right. Well, thanks for everything, Lieutenant. Oh, come on, sit down. There's plenty left here. Well, we better be headed back. Our captain will think we really went AWOL, right? Yeah, not to mention the fact that Cookie's probably tearing his hair out in your jail. <laughs> Another cup of coffee won't hurt. It's, it's a long trip, Lieutenant. We better be hitting the road. How long is a cup of coffee gonna take? Well, I guess it wouldn't take too long. The other three didn't. <laughs> <laughs> It is the duty of the court not only to protect society, but to protect men like you from yourselves. This is your sixth defense on this charge. There's only one way to keep you off the street. I sentence you to 30 days in the workhouse. Thomas McSally. Thomas McSally. Thomas McSally. Thomas McSally, you're charged with being drunk and disorderly. How do you plead? Guilty. Mm. This is getting to be your second home. Oh, all I had was two beers, Your Honor. The report of the police officer says that you were mooching on the street in an intoxicated condition, and that you had a bottle of cologne, a half-empty bottle of cologne in your pocket. All I had was two beers, Your Honor. And what was the cologne for? Well, that's for my hair. <laughs> Silence! Silence! Any further demonstration will be regarded as deliberate contempt of court, and as such, severely dealt with. Do you know how many times you've been arrested? No, I don't, Your Honor. 
This makes the 11th trip. Well, all I had was two beers, Your Honor. Well, those two beers are going to cost you a month apiece. I sentence you to 60 days in the workhouse. Then he gave it to you, huh? Fred Johnson. Fred Johnson. Fred Johnson to the bar. Oh, sorry. Uh, present, Your Honor. Fred, Fred Johnson, you're charged with being drunk and disorderly. How do you plead? Well, guilty, I guess. Don't you know? Guilty, Your Honor. Mm, you should know better. You're a businessman in Center City. The report of the arresting officer says that you were drunk in Commerce Street, and that while in that condition, you harangued a crowd about the corruption among... among our municipal officials. He reports that when he tried to stop you, you demanded to be arrested, so that you might appear in court before a dishonest judge. <laughs> Silence! Is this true? Well, here I am, Your Honor. Is the arresting officer in court? And the arresting officer is Patrolman Leonard, Your Honor. He has another case in traffic court at the moment. Oh. If Your Honor wants, I can send word for him to appear. No. Since the defendant has entered a plea of guilty, that won't be necessary. I want you to know, Mr. Johnson, that Westover is a hospitable town. We welcome visitors with open arms, just as we welcomed your convention of hardware dealers. But hospitable as we are, we expect our visitors to behave themselves. We don't expect them to get drunk and insult the judiciary. No, of course not, John. It was a slight miscalculation, really. I, I had this headache, and I took a little something for it, and I had this fruit drink. It's old-fashioned fruit punch. It had pieces of fruit in it and a tired-looking cherry on a toothpick. This sort of an offense cannot be condoned by this court. I must impose the mandatory sentence of 10 days in the workhouse. Mr. Johnson, we here in Westover open our gates to visitors, as I have told you. You came all the way from Center City to enjoy a meeting with your business associates. I want you to go back to Center City and tell everyone what a warm-hearted city Westover is. Sentence is suspended. That's all, Mr. Johnson. You are free to go. Well, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. I'll spread the word in Center City. Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson! Stop that man! Stop it! Officer Grady! Give Officer Brown a hand there! made a monkey out of you. Almost, yeah. I bet there'll be some changes in the rules and regulations around here. The rules have changed already. No more felony suspects in the tank. Ah, you see? I can amount to something. I can accomplish something. Prison reform, in a way. It's getting late. We better hit the road. How do you feel? Oh, I feel okay, I suppose. All I needed was another 10 seconds, and I'd have been out in the street. Say, who got wise to me, anyway? Nobody. What do you mean, nobody? You outfoxed yourself, Cookie. Who are you kidding? Somebody made me. They were, they were yelling. The only thing they were yelling was that you forgot your property. You mean this? No. Johnson's property. And you know what was in it? Besides the belt and necktie, I mean. Mm -mm. 300 some odd dollars in cash. They wanted to give it to you, that's all. That's the only reason they were yelling. <laughs> 